So, what's your name, first of all? Ali Asger. Ali? Ali? Ali Asger? Asger, yeah, correct. I'm Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, good to meet you. Yes, so, yeah, what, what do you believe happens uh, after this life? Um, I don't believe in anything. I'm an atheist, so I don't know. Like, I never yeah. thought about it. It's interesting. Where, uh, may I ask where you're from? I, I was born in Bangladesh and then I moved to US two years ago. So. And were it, so just kind of like wondering about your, you know, like how did you arrive at atheism? Or like did you grow up in an atheistic family? My family is very liberal. I grew up in a very conservative Muslim country, mm -hmm. but my mom and dad, they're both Marxist, so they believe in left and politics. Oh, okay. Leftist politics, so but they are not like announced atheist. It's quite hard to be a Christian Bangladesh because it's very Muslim dominant. Yes, yeah, so you don't talk. But to also, people. but I also grew up in a city, right? So nobody cared much about religion in the city oh, area. Yeah. I grew up on that progressive bubble, so I never had to think about being Muslim or practicing Islam or something like that. Yeah. So. Uh, so, um, would you say your parents? basically taught you to be atheist or how? they never taught me but they never pressured me to be a religious person also. So yeah. they are quite okay. Like yeah. I refuse to go to the mosque. I don't you know, like I, I think I stopped going to the mosque. I never went to the mosque very regularly, like like twice in a year with my dad just because of the ritual. Mm -hmm. But my dad was my dad or my mom, they are not someone who will go to the mosque very regularly. Yeah, more to so, just make uh, relatives happy or something, you think? Yeah, or? it's like in the, the festival time, during the Eid time, when you have to go to the mosque for like a Christmas when you go to the church, yeah. something like that. It's the thing to do. But when I stopped <laughs> doing that, they were quite okay with it. They never say me anything. I yeah. never argue with me or ask me questions. They were just quite okay with it. Yeah. So, so yeah. when you think about, the, you know, like, we're all going to die someday. Yeah. You feel like it's just like lights out, like we'll, we'll just cease to exist and not know what happened next. Is that? I think I'm a very present person. I don't think much about what is gonna happen, like if I die. Yeah. Or maybe because of my age, I'm kind of like all the time I'm on the present moment. Yeah, your so, age. Because of my age. Because you're young. Because I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm young. So yeah. I don't think much about like death and what is gonna happen if I die. Where I'll go. Now you're. A, are you a student? I'm a student. Yes. A graduate student. I'm a grad student. Yeah. Okay. Are you? So you're. You're studying for the future, right? Like for a future occupation. What are you going? What are you hoping to be? So I'm studying something which don't have any future because I'm an artist and I'm studying oh, really? fine art. So. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. I. I don't know. Like it's, it's very weird. Yeah. I, I, guess, I guess what I'm just saying is. Uh, most people do think about the future, maybe not after death, but we think about the future in our lives. We, like we make plans yes, like, for the future. I have plans, but also um, plan doesn't work all the time, right? There is right. this huge uncertainty in your life. So that's kind of learning in my 27 years of life. I learned not to stick with plan all the time, be flexible and something yeah. will might change. Like I didn't know that you were going to show up and you want sure. to I appreciate your flexibility, so yeah. That's yeah. what that's what I believe in life, that being flexible and being easy to work when something is coming up. Yeah. Because that's how life works best rather than being very much into a plan. Yeah. 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 And you with uh, with atheism, like how do you feel towards uh, religious people? Like have, do you know anybody who's say Christian or any yeah, like, yeah. like, do you I, have conversations about I religious actually, belief? most of my American experience in rural America, like I was in um, rural in Illinois for a year in 2013 14. And then I lived for two years in Maine, in rural Maine. So Maine? Oh, okay. Maine. So people are very conservative, right? Yeah. They are Christian and they go to church and they are like what? I believe majority of the American is. Must have been an exchange student or something. I was an exchange student in um, Illinois, but oh. in Maine I was a grad student. Uh, 
So yes, I, I, I know conservative Muslims also, I know conservative Hindus, mm -hmm. I have all sort of friends. But atheism came in a way because I didn't find any logic to believe in, in a religion. Mm -hmm. Like why I should believe in a religion. Um, I think it initially started on because I wanted to reject Islam all the time. Oh, uh -huh. So it started with that phase, like I want to reject Islam because it like maybe finding hard, things wrong with it. It was easy to be a Muslim. It's more hard not to be a Muslim, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's becoming, uh, you know, atheism is becoming very popular, at yeah. least around this part of Chicago, or okay. you know, um, which as a Christian, I, that makes that saddens me actually. Uh -huh. You know, so as a Christian, I, I would, um, you know, I would love for you know everyone to be a Christian. You know, it, it's like it's it's something that uh, um, I've really found to be true for me and for a lot of other Christians that I know. And it's kind of like um, I want to share that with other people. And it's not. I don't know if. Um, you know, like some people think, well, why do Christians always want other people to be Christians? You know, why, we want, why do we want to convert everyone, you know? Because and you want then, to build your own community, so as much people as can gather, that's good yeah. for your community. So I understand it, that. That's, I guess that's part of it. We would like to, more people to, uh, to be a part of the church. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons is, is because, you know, when we read the Bible, Jesus mm -hmm. said to go out and... Mm -hmm. and Spread the message, you know. It's not. To, it's not because I want to uh, earn heaven myself. Yeah, I understand, anything. but I think these basic things are almost same in all religion. Mm -hmm. Like in Islam, also the same. In uh, Buddhism, it's also the same. In Jainism, it's also the same. I don't know much about being Jew, but so so far, my understanding of few religion. It's common, right? So you yeah. like to have more people, you will tell them why the religion is the best. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, you, if you're happy with that. Um, and then part of it is, is uh, I mean, I don't know you or anything, but a love for for our, our Lord, which would be Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, but also a love for other people. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Bible tells us and I know this is hard to, to hard to hear, but it tells us that if that that everybody will live forever, but some people will live forever in heaven and some forever in hell. You know, it's not that it's not that we don't exist. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't want that you know for anyone else and at the same time I know I can't convince anyone you know it's to me it's more God's doing convincing mm -hmm. people but let me ask you this um, how do you how do you approach the hard questions of life for example like where everything came from you know like even not not even um, saying you have to believe in the Christian God but just mm -hmm. a creator in general um, and just the whole idea of existence, that, that we're here and there's matter and energy and... So the thing know. is, all the question you are asking, mm -hmm. this comes with certain privilege when you have time to think about all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So many people in the world, they don't have much time or um, privilege, I would rather say, to think about all these deep questions of life because they are surviving their life, yeah. right? So when you're surviving your life, I don't believe religion becomes such an important topic in their life. Religion is important because they know that they want to rely on something. They want to blame someone if something bad happened. They want to thank someone if something would happen in their life. You know, that's I'd be the, blessed, you know, like if they're working that, that's that hard. That's the basic purpose religion does serve in most of the people, the majority of the people in the wor world who are in working class mm -hmm. and who are surviving their life. Like I know people back home who are surviving their life less than a dollar per, per day, right? Yeah. So in their life, they are working so hard to earn their bread and butter. So it doesn't matter if it's Muslim, they're Muslim or Christian or whatever they are. Yeah. Because there are a huge amount of people, I know I have friends, like two generations back, who get converted into from Hinduism to Christianism because they find it's much easier to be a Christian because then the church will support them. It's that easy for them. Mm -hmm. My family, my dad's family was converted into Muslim, into Hinduism. 
because they find being Muslim will give them more opportunity mm. because that was the rules of the empire. So for majority of the people, religion doesn't serve the purpose, the spiritual purpose. It serves a purpose of just having a life. And for me That's also, an I'm surviving, surviving my life in a new country. So for me, it doesn't matter. Like if you want to identify me because of my name or my past background as a Muslim, uh, you can, but I really never. Th I don't think about religion because I yeah. don't have that luxury right now to think too much what the purpose of life and what is gonna happen when I die because I know I have to survive first. Yeah. And then when I have a certain amount of economical stability, then I might uh, invest my time to find that deeper meaning of life. Yeah. One one way to look at it though is okay. Let's say there's. I, I imagine like. India or like China, there's a lot of say rice paddies in Bangladesh, right? Um, let's say someone's very poor, they're working 16 hours a day or more, you know, sunrise to sunset, whatever, they're working in the rice paddies. I'm pretty sure you would say that they can still think while they're working. You know what they I'm saying? Can. They can. As a matter of fact, like repetitious work, we could do a lot of deep thinking, yeah. you know? Maybe in our technological society, we have less time to think because we're we're so con you know thinking about all the little details and things that we have to take care of. So Christianity actually um, doesn't teach that we have to do all that much deep theological thought. You know what I mean? Um, one of the one of the basic premises of of the Christian Bible is that. Everybody has a sense of right and wrong. Like we all have a conscience, you know, um, that we're in touch with. Um, whether we're, you know, knee deep in theological books or whether we're knee deep in a rice paddy, you know, um, we still have this sense of right and wrong. And, and the Bible actually teaches that it comes from God. That it's a God-given, like He put His law in our hearts, you know. Yes, but there is two parts in every religion, right? So one is spiritual and one is ritual. The spiritual part is what is going to happen after life and like who, who is my God, who is my creator and all yeah. this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the ritual part, which I was telling you, is almost same in every religion. I see. If you look at the major religion, the ritual part is same, that the, every God is saying this is bad and this is good. Yeah. This is uh, what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do. So for the ritualistic part, this is a question whether we really need a religion or not. When yeah. you have a religion, like suppose a person who is a farmer who has a rice paddy field in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. I don't think for him it will change. Like when my dad's family converted into Islam, they were the same person when they were Hindu also, right? Because oh, the Hindu god is that what is they the, convert from yes, Hindu to okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Hindu god is also saying the same thing, like don't steal things because that's bad, and don't tell lies because that's bad. And the Muslim god, the yeah. Allah is also saying the same thing. Yeah. So the ritual part doesn't change for them really. Yeah. And mostly people try to follow the ritualistic part of the religion, which is the universal truth in every religion and in everyone's life also. Like if you yeah. believe on ethics in life. But the spiritual part might change because in Hinduism there is a hundred God and in Islam there is one God, right? And the God is not uh, like invisible God. So the spiritual part does change, but that doesn't matter for most of the people. If you look at the politics and the history of the religion, yeah. the thing mostly work how much power you have as a community. Whereas right? the Christianism have more power, the Jew have more the poor power, the things happening in Palestine. So it's all about it's kind of, it sounds yeah. like yeah, you have kind of like a social, like the motivation for many people, like an understanding of religion is based on uh, social dynamics or politics. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. It's, I think now in the contemporary time, it's less about your spiritual move. It's more about your social context. Yeah. What country you belong to? What power dynamic you belong to? And that's part of the Western identity, identity politics, right? You like to identify yourself as a white American Christian, and I like to identify myself as a brown immigrant atheist. Mm -hmm. And that's all about our political view. You, from your political point of view, you want to identify yourself in a certain way, because that might give you more power and privilege. Yeah. And I want to identify myself in a different way, because that might stronger my opinion and give me some social advantage.
I don't know. Like it sounds like uh, your your parents have taught you well. Okay. <laughs> um, with you know, like the uh, uh, did you say they're from a communist perspective or? Yes, but I don't think my dad ever had a conversation with me about oh, really? religion or Marxism or anything like oh, okay. that. That wasn't a. That's how I grew up, but that's not a experience of every Bangladeshi or every South Asian. Yeah. Most of them are very religiously conservative. They would like to have more and more in-depth religious conversation in their family. But yeah. my family was just culturally more progressive, I would say progressive, because they never thought that is an important topic to discuss in a family, yeah. that what my religious belief is. Maybe um, just to give you like a, a Christian, I, I don't know like how much exposure to the Christian perspective you've had, you know, but um, that whole idea that we have a conscience would apply to all people, you know, not just Christians, but Hindus and Buddhists and atheists, and it, it would say that everyone who, who's human has a God-given sense of right and wrong, and, and so religion is man's attempt I mean, I, I realize something like religion has a lot of different purposes for a lot of different people. So the whole social and political perspective is no, no less true, right? But, um, but that, that religion is man's attempt to solve the problem that even though we know right from wrong, we don't follow it, you know? Like, like our ideals or our, our conscience is is a higher standard than, than we actually live out. For example, you know, we might know it's wrong to lie, but we still tell lies. And then we try to justify it, you know, or um, uh, taking something that doesn't belong to us, whether it doesn't matter the cost, you know, something you've done before. I feel like the religion, what religion does, it's mm -hmm. not a parameter of living your life in a right way or a wrong way. Mm -hmm. It's give you either a fear or a fantasy about your power, like life, life after death, right? Mm -hmm. So it's either a fear that if you tell a lie that you will gonna get punished after life, or a fantasy like if you do a good thing then you will gonna um, reward it with something like in heaven or something yeah. like that, right? So yeah. it's either fear or a fantasy for me. The yeah. afterlife or the religious, um, like all this religious thing and everything. So, and so have you ever thought I of I never a... thought of like having afterlife. So yeah. um, never I have a fear, neither I have a fear, nor I have a fantasy about yeah. religion. So, so it's you... very easy for me to kind of differentiate that, okay, there is no reason for me to believe in a religion because I have a sensible person who have good education and who have moral strength, so I do what I think right and I do not, I do what I think wrong. Mm -hmm. do, do you ever think of that atheism could be a fantasy, that there is no one to be accountable to? or I no never felt like life? atheism is a fantasy, it's a, it's a utopian land obviously, we're really trying to be living in a time that atheism could be a solution or a way of life when everything is very segregated into religion. I'm and sorry? Everything into very segregated into your religion, your belief, what yeah. race and ethnicity you are come from. So it's obviously a utopian land, and obviously it comes with certain privilege that I'm well read, well educated. I go to an institution, I have access, I have money, mm -hmm. so that I can afford to be an atheist. So many people might not have that access and privilege to afford atheism, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all so it's very a, political for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I encourage you to. Uh, think about the possibilities sure. for for example like just just based on I don't know again don't know how much exposure to the Bible you've had but let's say you die today you wake up you do wake up you know yeah. and you're standing before God you're it's judgment day yeah. you know how would you do what, what what do you think would as far as from what you know about the Bible or, or Christianity what do you think the standard would be like, being judged you know, like we all we all have a world in our life. I don't know, maybe you are married, you have a family and you have kids, so that's very real for you, mm -hmm. I suppose say, right? So at the same way, like past life, after life is very real to you because you grew up with that. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and in my world there is no existence of the past life so it's very just even hard to imagine even hard to imagine that yeah. okay I'll die and I'll die like every people die like every animal die yeah uh, like every species die and I will also die and that's the end of life so it's hard for me to have the imagination that I'm like but you're an artist you can have the yeah <laughs> <laughs> you could imagine these things see what I'm saying I, I don't know like every imagine every people have some limitation on imagination like it's mm -hmm. not like yeah we are creative and we are also creative yeah it's not like I have capacity supernatural of, abilities yes it's imagine. not like that so yeah it's just not in my world it's not yeah. in my reality that thinking of okay what is gonna happen if I die tomorrow yeah yeah, I'll think what we're gonna happen if I die tomorrow. Who's gonna come and collect my body from so, America? Like a, like, so, so I guess a kind of a, a way of saying the same question is: Are you a good person? You know. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I'm not good for everyone, maybe. Uh, but the people I trust in, the people I believe they mean something in my life, I'm good for them. Yeah. So. If you're a good person, then if it comes down to a judgment day and you, let's say you did, you know, I, I think you could imagine a, like a courtroom scene where there's a judge okay. and there's the evidence. That can be a coffee shop also. Huh? That can be a coffee shop also. I'm sorry, I still... That can be a coffee shop also. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the God is serving coffee to everyone and everyone is just yeah. with the God. So, so if it's based on being good, you know, if you go into that situation believing that I'm good, I got, you know, even yeah. if there is a God, I'm a pretty good person, then why worry? Because if you're correct and there is no God, you won't ever know. If you're incorrect and there is a God, you, you're you good to go because you're a good person. See what I'm saying? So like, I've never met someone who's an atheist yet who doesn't try to be a good person. They're just trying to be good without God. And the Bible actually teaches that, you know, the very first temptation of man, which, you know, the Bible says there is a there is a, a tempter, you know, Satan. You've heard of him, right? So, and it teaches that the, the first temptation was you can be like God. He was saying that to Adam and Eve. The idea of good and bad is comparative, right? It's very comparative idea like what is good and what is bad mm -hmm. like a good coffee what is a good coffee for me and what is a bad good coffee for you it's very comparative well, what actually, is a good, for, good food for me and what is a good for, food for you the idea in the western society that the way i i can get treated as a bad person in back home because the many way i live my life and i will consider it as a very good and very brave person in the western world mm -hmm. the way the same way i'm living my life right so it's a very comparative idea and then again you have to go back to the social context and the, in the different places and the reality that in your life what is good that's not good in my life so if you you are trying to say like every atheist try to be a good person in their life obviously you want to have that good feeling that i'm a good person yeah. but also the parameter of good and bad might be different for you than me yeah so yeah i mean it does it does change for us the understanding is that God's gave commands, you know, like for example, the, the first person, don't eat from this tree, right? And so for, for us, for you and I, we go out to an apple tree, we eat apples from the tree, no problem, right? But if God said don't do it, then that would be bad. So, so what's bad is going against our, our God-given uh, Yes, but in this commands. case, if you believe on some, you are following someone's command, then you don't mm -hmm. need your own uh, own judgment because we are not like I'm an adult. I believe I'm 27, 26 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm not someone who is 10 years old who don't who need their mom and dad to say every single thing like this is good and this is bad. This right. is rotten apple. This is a good apple. Yeah. And I don't want to live my life in that way because I want to grow from that 10 years old to 27 years old. And now, I, and the, what makes us different than being an uh, animal? Because the human being have their own judgment and own merit to use. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a grown up person, why I need someone's comment to decide what is good and bad? I will be, I will learn, I will get knowledge, I will know about history, I will know how the world's run, and that's what will make me a sensible person in this society, mm -hmm. to make the correct judgment, what is wrong and what is 
uh, write. So why I need a manuscript from some some invisible person or invisible God to tell me what is right and what is wrong? Yeah. Well, that's why I guess what I'm saying is that uh, it's uh, not necessarily a manuscript. It's actually written on your heart. It's like you know in different situations. Hi. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, uh, so, religion would be. We have that sense of right and wrong, but we break it all too often, or we don't do the good we we know we ought to do. How can we have a relationship with our Creator, um, despite that? So, and, and you're saying you have a sense of right and wrong, but it's something you've just come up with? No, or you have to earn it. Or? Like, that's what I'm saying. That That's how human beings grew up. Like, how you become an adult from to a kid. Like, like as a kid, you like to steal some chocolate. Yeah. You, because, you know, in a sense, because you think, I want that, I want that in any way. Yeah. Right? So now, if I want $100, I cannot just go and get the cash. Right. But I just want $100, I want that. I know that that will gonna make the society more vulnerable. So yeah. that's my judgment as a person. And I don't need a religion for that to understand that thing. Yeah. I just have to believe on the social structure and the social rule and there is no and that's the ritual thing, the ritual part of the yeah. of, of the religion. And actually our, our understanding is that our our parental upbringing, you know, our parents training is a part of what um, refines our sense of conscience as well as like you're saying our, our intellectual background you know our, our education uh, just our experiences you know does a person say well it's wrong to take that hundred dollars because I might get caught or do they say well it's wrong to take it because it's not mine you know uh, there's different ways of looking at it uh, if someone's just gonna leave a hundred dollars sitting around well then maybe I will take it because obviously they don't care about it you know it's their fault mm -hmm. uh, I mean there's different ways of, of looking at that mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the idea that we're accountable to someone else is a, a part of Christianity and it's something that we don't have a, a, a hard time living living with you know how do you feel about that would what if there was if you had a choice of God existing or not, you know, like your creator who knows how you best function, knows everything about you, would you want that? You know, would you want to... No, I don't think the whole idea of being accountable, I would rather prefer to be accountable to someone human. Someone who lives in the same society where I live in. Someone mm -hmm. who matters in my life and someone who is physical. Rather than being at a hunt to go to the invisible person and I have to die to see that person and maybe, maybe not, I'm not even sure because nobody dies, came back and tell me that this is what happened after you die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know that sounds like a very lame example, lame logic, but this it's is... It's not, it's not. Like... It sounds like you're... I mean, accountability I'm sure you're, should be a social accountability. That yeah, accountability and I'm sure you're already accountable because to... I'm living here, I'm sitting in front of you, I can afford yeah. a coffee and I can drink a coffee and spend five hours on my laptop. That's something a privilege I have and that's what I'm accountable for yeah. in this society. Rather than being accountable to this invisible person, I don't even know who, whether that person or that that power exists yeah. or not. Because one of the, actually, one of the things that comforts me as a Christian is, yes, I'm accountable to God and He does know everything. In other words, if it appears that I'm doing the wrong thing to people, maybe, God knows my circumstances, and I'm accountable to someone who knows all the details. Now that's that's a comfort, but it's also a, kind of a scary because I don't always make correct moral choices. You know? Yeah, and exactly that's so, how religion do, does work. It's either fantasy or fear. Yeah. When you're doing good thing, you have a fantasy. Okay, I will get rewarded after I die from mm -hmm. the religion. If you do that thing, you are afraid that I did something wrong and maybe I'll get punished. Yeah. So it's either a fantasy or a fear. Yeah, I, that's one way to look at it. And then, of, of course, uh, I, I find that almost almost all criticisms of Christianity or religion in general kind of go back to atheism in the same way. So, so a Christian would say atheism is a fantasy or a fear 
you know, I fear being held accountable, therefore I'm going to, you know, it's kind of like, a, you know, like standing on a, on a road in front of an oncoming truck mm -hmm. and uh, saying, well, I fear this truck, so I'm going to put my hands over my eyes and tell myself that trucks don't exist, you know. So there's that fear that I'm escaping by just saying, well, I just don't believe in it, you know. Um, and, and I can see how that would work for, I, I, I'm pretty sure you would say the same thing, you can see how that would work for atheism I, I too, say, maybe not agree, I wouldn't but, say it's escape, I'll frame it in a, in a different word, I think it's a self-exploration, because atheism, for me, my version of atheism is not a constructed idea, like I don't dismiss all the time, like the radical atheists, that religion is a bad, trash thing, I'm not saying that, oh, yeah. like if you're okay with it, you are okay with it, and I'm yeah. okay not having it, and yeah. you should also expect that thing. Yeah. Except that thing. Um, it's a self exploration and also um, it's a non judgmental way to live our life. That you have a different opinion, I have a different opinion. Even if I claim myself as an atheist, by saying I'm myself as an atheist, I'm actually making. Uh, shadow religion for myself. Right. Yeah, I guess. Because it would be. what does religion mean to have some structure, rules, and believe yeah. in something? So the the only difference I have that you have a a book, you believe on something which have a history, you believe, and I believe on the present. I believe on myself and self ethics and all these things. It's good that you recognize that you have beliefs. I, I've met a lot of atheists who say, well, atheism is a lack of belief, you know? And uh, really, uh, you know, things that we can't prove, we got to take on faith. We can't prove God doesn't exist, you know? We have to, we can't prove that we're not held, a, or that we are held, a, or not held accountable, you know? So it's kind of a, it's a faith, too. It's a faith that, wow, yeah, I'm going to believe that God doesn't exist. Faith, it's a self-faith that I trust yeah. on myself. If I yeah. do, we are vulnerable, right? As a human being, you want to trust on that side say, like, a uh, poor person. Uh, he, why he will trust or they will trust on a God? Because either they want to blame someone or thank someone, right? They want to thank someone if something good happen. If they want to blame someone if something bad happen. That it's all because of the God, yeah. because of the God. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of like putting uh, poor people into certain categories. It's not only poor people. Like everyone right. who are yeah. who believe in religion. I'm just giving an example. Right. And when yeah. you're atheist, you don't have someone to thank. You don't have someone to blame. It's all on to you. So you have to be a very strong person to believe in yourself. But you are believing in yourself rather than believing in someone else. Yeah. And egoistically as a person, I will go rather believing on myself rather than believing in someone else and believing in someone or thanking someone else for my life. Yeah. Well, may I uh, just leave you with, um, you know, the teachings of Christianity is that you will be held accountable. Actually, it, it does say that there's enough evidence available to us to believe that God exists. Every um, religion says the same thing. It's yeah, not, nothing there's enough, but there's there's not enough. There's as much as we need, but not as much as we, we may demand or want. You know, um, and so uh, I'll say this in in love. If, you know, I mean, I don't know you, but that you will be held accountable, and that there is a way out. That Christianity does offer um, uh, a right relationship with God, rather than living in you know, estrangement, because that's the whole story of the Bible is that that uh, our disobedience, our sin, causes us to not have a right relationship with God, but that God makes possible a right relationship, so there can be hope for the future, but, uh, but uh, you know, you are, are choosing to put your hope in non-existence, I guess, so, yeah. fair enough? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the conversation.